Good morning. Welcome to worship at St. Paul's Church on this fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. It's a joy to greet you as we gather for worship this morning here in this place on this uh, wonderful winter day. If you're visiting with us for the first time, let me take this uh, opportunity to extend a special welcome to you. Thank you for coming to share in the service with us. If you do us the favor by signing the uh, membership, the visitor card you find in the pews there, we'd be very grateful to you and would enable us to acknowledge your presence with us here as, you, as we have gathered for worship this morning. I think uh, we have an announcement about soup. Come back. not about soup at all. No, I'm just kidding. So good morning, St. Paul's. And, and as Pastor Finch mentioned to you, we um, are great, very grateful to all of you for supporting UMW's soup sale. As always, every year, we had a very, very successful sale day last Sunday. But we do have some left. Um, it, is, it was frozen after last Sunday, so it's been in the freezer all week. Just want you to be aware of that. We have very limited quantities of some um, of the soups and we'd love for you to come down after right after service and we want to sell out remember all profits go to missions thank you thank you now the um, pastor is beginning today a orientation session for folks who are interested in joining the church here of uh, being members at the st paul's church this is going to take place in the Susanna Wesley Lounge, just as you're le uh, left as you leave the sanctuary. If uh, you're interested in becoming a member of the church, uh, you're invited to join the group as it gathers uh, this morning following the service. Now let us stand and greet one another as we gather for worship this morning. <clears throat> Now in the quietness and confidence that is our strength in God, let us center ourselves and prepare for this time of worship together. Please rise for the call to worship. 
Jesus said, Come, follow me. The hymn is the number 64. Holy, holy, holy. and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God of mercy, at this moment of Sabbath rest, on your day of welcome gift, we bless the work which you have begun in us and express in this time of worship together. Make good its defects and let us finish in a way that pleases you. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And let us turn together to Psalm 138. For the reading this morning, this is on page 853 in the Book of Worship. Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything.
Great. This guy's already anticipating. He's, he's, he's awake. Good morning. We're going to ask all of the young people hi, to come forward, please, for our children's message. Okay. Good morning. How are you? I have a little special. Is anybody hungry at all yet? And I'm going to pass this little bowl, this little dish around. What do you see in here? What are these? They are, they're goldfish. So we're going to enjoy some fish as we do our message. Good job. We got a leader here getting the job done. Very good. And then you can take this and take a few, or I'll hold it for you if you need help. We're going to try not to make a mess, but I'll clean up later if we do. Has any of you ever actually gone fishing before? Okay. Great. And have you caught anything before? That's okay. My dad was a fisherman, and I'd go fishing, and I don't know if I ever caught a fish, but I sure watched him. Have you watched anyone catch a fish before? What's that like? Um, once I saw this one lady catch a shark, baby one. How big? Like, wow. Oh, my goodness, that's exciting. Well, today we're not going to catch fish. Yeah, you're being so polite. You can take a small handful. Or a, or a big handful if you can eat it all. <laughs> um, and then we can enjoy some fish. In a second, we're going to watch a little movie. Who likes to watch movies? So I'm going to, we're going to kind of start the story together, and then we're going to end it with a movie. Okay? So one day, back way when, in Jesus' time, Jesus was walking around, along the shore near a lake. And I, before I tell the whole story, I want to, say this back in Jesus's time when they went they would go fishing to feed people back in the day they'd have to hunt and catch and grow things to survive did you know that way back like 2,000 years ago that's a long time ago now we go to the store to get our food right our groceries or we might go to a local market and people still do fish for food but back then that was the way the fishermen could make a living, was catching the fish and then selling the fish to the folks in the village. Well, one day Jesus was walking along the shoreline and he saw some men fishing. And he went up to Simon Peter and he said, Simon, can you please move your boat to the deeper part of the water so that I can talk to the people on the shoreline? And I think he wanted to do that because do you know that when you're across water, your, your sound will carry? Have you heard that before? If you stand on the other side of a lake and yell, who knows? Maybe someone can hear you. Try it sometime, but make sure your parents are with you when you do it. But um, it does, it supposedly the, the sound carries a little, so I guess that's why he wanted to be deeper in the water and in the boat. But he spoke to the, the crowd that had come to hear Jesus teach. And after he got done teaching, um, he was looking at the, the men and, and Simon's and, and looking at the boat and the fishermen and they said, we've been working hard all day or all night and we haven't caught anything. And Jesus gave them an instruction and this is where our movie comes in. And I hope, I hope that we'll talk about it in a few minutes after. I hope that everyone will be able to see it and at least the congregation will hopefully be able to hear it. all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I let down the nets. James! John!
me from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. Did you hear what was Jesus' last words? Did you hear what he just said? He said not to be afraid, and then what did he say? I saw you react. He basically said, yeah, he asked the men to be fishers, fishermen of men. Did you hear that? What do you think he meant by that? What do you think he meant by that? Yeah. Yeah, he's asking the men to be fishermen and to go out and to tell the world about him and God. And that is really his message. And so I wanted to just talk with you about that. Is there any way that we can be um, helpers of, of Jesus? Because that's what he did. He went and asked these men for help, right? He asked them to go out and be fishermen of men. And that's what our Bible story is about today. And so Jesus is, Jesus is asking them for help. Do you think we could be helpers for Jesus? How could we be helper of Jesus? What do you think? How can we share Jesus with others? What's some things that we could do or say? Can we be, yeah, you got one? Okay. What? We will be fishermen. Oh, okay, we can be fishermen in the sense of helping people. Can we be kind? Yeah, we can be kind. Can we help friends in school? And we can we can show God's love. We can have you given anybody a hug yet today? You could give somebody a hug today. It could be your teacher. If make sure that you're not sick though, because we don't want to pass flus. But absolutely, we can show our love in many ways. Okay, let's let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, thank you for inviting us to be your helper. We still try each day to be a good helper. We will be kind to others, and we will help tell people about you. Amen. fish today. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> if you please join me in the prayer of the day. You call us wanderer of seashores and sidewalks, inviting us to sail out of our snug harbors. Do you think harbors of your faith? To wander from our predictable paths to follow you into the unpredictable footsteps of the kingdom, to leave the comfort of our homes and accompany you into the uncomfortable places we try to avoid. As we wait in our simple, constantly uncertain lives, speak to us, Spirit of Grace, of that hope which is our anchor, of that peace which is our rock, of that grace which is our refuge. Amen. We're now invited to join in a moment of silent prayer as we turn our thoughts to the Lord. Amen. Please remain seated as we sing hymn number 349. Turn your eyes upon Jesus.
of the congregation that we may gather and include in our prayer this morning. Bright moments on a cold day. Well, Y'all look pretty dead to me. I think we're going to need something to liven us up here, Pastor. <laughs> yeah, Kathleen. Say something. is in the Netherlands, uh, and Rob and Kathleen are happy. <laughs> Marie is coping, doing great, learning a lot. Isn't it wonderful to be able to go abroad and study? I think that's just so great. Yes. Uh, did you say your husband's sweet birthday or your sweet husband's birthday? Happy birthday, Twain. Wonderful. Others? Yes. And today is Ray's birthday. Happy birthday, Ray. Wonderful. Yeah. It was a real great day when these guys were born. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a Thursday morning work crew. <laughs> but no, one that's as good. All right. Are there concerns? Yes. What is her name? Virginia. Lord, in your mercy. We have lost four of our saints this last two weeks. I'll read their names and we can keep by their memory fresh with thanksgiving in our hearts, their families and our prayers, they grieve their passing. Ben Fay, who was a regular in the back pew right in the middle every Sunday. Miss you, Ben. Uh, Irene Osmondson. Shalene uh, Foster. And Gertrude Brenton. Gertrude is gone. And uh, her service of memory is going to be tomorrow morning here at 11 o'clock in the church. And then we're praying today also for Eleanor Langanowski, who is a patient at Wilmington Hospital. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this bright winter's day, this day of remembering as you call us into this place of worship of how the warmth of God's love melts the clouds of sin and sadness and drives our doubt away, opens avenues for us like windows that, um, that uh, in a lat the light of of the day into our souls and into our hearts and makes us feel the goodness of life, its wonder, and its joy. We remember today the folk who mark milestones in their lives as they continue on their journey of faith with you and with the people of God in this world. We thank you for the energy of all who, having heard the call of Christ, um, have given themselves and have discovered in the path that they have taken uh, with him the meaning of who he is in the lordship and the kingship of human life in the salvation of their souls. We thank you for the memory of those who have graced this sanctuary and this church with their worship and with their work across the years now have been by your gracious love taken into your presence. Help us, we pray, in rehearsing uh, the memories of their lives and the events we shared with them 
to be more resolute in the way in which we live so that we may join with them in that great company of all those who have found hope and peace in you. Hear us as we raise these prayers to you today in this service. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who has taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, friends, let us continue in our worship with the giving of our morning offering as we remember the words of Jesus, it is more blessed to give than to receive. I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward at this time.
Let us pray together. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Amen. Please remain standing as we join together in singing maybe a new song for us, Two Fishermen in the Faith We Sing, number 2101. Join me in the prayer of illumination. O Lord, give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying to the church this day. Amen. Today's gospel reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. It's in page 62 of the New Testament. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out 
into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish, their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. It is uh, good to be back with you this morning, having been away on a spiritual renewal week last uh, this past week down in uh, DeLand, Florida at Stetson University, where there was a winter pastor school. It's a wonderful uh, time to be away. Uh, it was a little bit warmer than up here, but um, it was also uh, it was just good to to be able to uh, to be still for a few days and and to be renewed. A husband. A husband quit fishing and began going to church on Sundays. So after the service one day, grateful to see him coming each week, the preacher said as he was walking out the door, Henry, it makes me feel good to see you and your wife here every Sunday. Henry said then back to the pastor, well, I figured I'd rather hear your sermon than hers. So. fishing. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. And they left everything and followed him. Let us pray together. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. How many of you are afraid of deep water? Let me see a show of hands. How many of you are afraid of deep water? Maybe like you, you've watched Jaws 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? <laughs> Have you ever done this? Have you ever walked out into the ocean bobbing up and down to keep your head above the water? Possibly stepping only on uh, God knows what? you know, something sharp or something soft and squishy until you're so far out you can no longer touch bottom. Just suspend it there in the mystery. I don't know about you, but when I stand before the ocean, particularly at nighttime, or some other large body of water that I know is deep and over my head, I feel both a sense of awe and a sinking feeling in my stomach. Standing beside the Sea of Galilee with the crowd pressing in against him, to hear him speak, Luke writes, the word of God, Jesus climbs into a fishing boat belonging to Simon, who was busy washing his nets, telling him to put out his boat into shallow water. Having finished teaching, Jesus now calls for Simon you remember hearing this? To put his boat out into the deep water to let down his nets for a catch. At first, Simon is hesitant. Master, we have fished all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. The deep. The deep has a significant place in our scriptures. In the first two verses of the book of Genesis, we read that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. 
In Genesis chapter 7, verse 11, we read, In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventh day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth for 40 days and nights. Having not obeyed the command of God to go and preach repentance to the people of Nineveh, you may recall the story, having jumped overboard to save his shipmates from a turbulent sea, the prophet Joseph, uh, Jonah had been swallowed by what? A great fish. Of this ordeal, Jonah reminisces, out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, all your waves and billows passing over me. The deep. The deep can be a place of darkness and of uncertainty, of fear and defenselessness, of emotional and spiritual turmoil. It can feel like a deep, inescapable pit, a kind of death, a sea of troubles, washing over us, brought on by both the sins at times of our flesh or simply by the vicissitudes of life, change, griefs, traumas, addiction, physical and psychological infirmities, the deep. The deep is a state of mind or soul that all of us, if we could, would try and avoid, but of which none of us at some point in our life are immune. The deep. Having finished teaching the multitude, then what does Jesus call Simon to do? Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon put out the church, put out the members of St. Paul's United Methodist Church into the deep water and let them put down their nets for a catch. Why? Because Jesus knows where the greatest number of fish are to be found. It was into the deep that Jesus came and let down his nets to catch a religious teacher who, fearing that he might be found out, who had come to him under the cover of darkness. Because on the outside, though he appeared clean, on the inside, he was full of dead men's bones, the deep. To catch a Samaritan woman at a well who had not one but five husbands, the one that she was living with now not being her husband, the deep to catch a man who had been injuring himself among the tombs and fighting a legion of competing voices in his head. To catch a friend who for four days had been bound and shut away within a darkened tomb, the deep. No, Jesus did not come, friends, to wade in the shallows of life, but rather to enter into the deep water of human experience. The deep water of poverty and of hunger. The deep water of moral failure and mental illness. The deep water of religious and racial intolerance. The deep water of infirmity and hopelessness. The Greek word for catch in the New Testament in which it was originally written is agra, which classically came to mean to restore life and strength. Agra, to restore life and strength, to revive, to make new again. Catch, Agra. Jesus calls Simon, Jesus calls us, the church, into the deep waters of human suffering and chaos. To catch, to help restore others, to restore life and strength, to revive, 
to make new again. While the deep in the Bible is a place of uncertainty and chaos, it is also a place of the possibility of new beginnings. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, the Spirit of God swept across the face of the waters, God saying, let there be light, and there was light. Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets. When the fountains of the deep burst forth for 40 days and 40 nights, on the 150th day, God remembered Noah and all the animals on the ark and made a great wind to blow over the earth and the waters subsided and the fountains of the deep were closed and the waters receded from the earth and the ark came to rest. Put out into the deep waters and let down your nets. Having repented within the belly of the great fish, having declared from there that the deliverance of our being belongs to the Lord, we read in Jonah that the Lord speaks to the fish and it spews him out upon dry land. Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets. Caught within the nets of God's love, Nicodemus is restored, revived, having been full of dead men's bones, is now filled with the Spirit of God and is born from above. The woman at the well who thirsted inwardly now is able to drink from streams of living water from which she shall never thirst again. The Gerasene demoniac, having struggled for years with competing voices in his head, is now, the Bible says, restored to his right mind. And Lazarus, who was bound in a tomb for four days, is now called forth from darkness into light. Simon, put out into the deep water, and let down your nets. Out of the deep water, out of chaos, God brings order. God brings a new creation. People are claimed by God as God's beloved and towards God's grand purpose. Having filled their boats with the great catch of fish, having stepped back to take in the whole scene, we read that Simon falls at Jesus' feet, saying to him, Lord, go away from me, for I am a sinful man. Jesus tells him, Jesus tells us, Jesus tells the church not to fear, for from now on we will be fishing for people. Who better to fish in the deep than those who have spent some time in the deep themselves. Can I get an amen? Deep calls to deep, the psalmist writes, in the roar of waves. So feeling a little inadequate and uncertain at times, when I'm about to walk from a hallway into an intensive care room to visit one of our members, Sometimes I'll hear Jesus say to me, don't be afraid. I have made you a fisher of people. And I'll say to myself, go ahead, David. Put out into the deep and let down your nets. Or when I get a call from someone who would like to come into the office to talk, in a tone of voice that leaves me wondering, before I welcome them into the office, sometimes I'll hear Jesus say to me, do not be afraid, I have made you a fisher of people. And I'll say to myself, go ahead, David, put out into the deep and let down your nets. Or when I'm walking up these steps behind me on a Sunday morning, always feeling a little inadequate, even a little ill-prepared, I'll sometimes hear Jesus say to me, do not be afraid, I have made you a fisher of people. 
And I'll say to myself, go ahead, David. Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Who knows? Ours is not to question, but to obey. How about you? Jesus has called you too. And that's why you're here this morning, sitting here in the sanctuary. Jesus is calling out of all of us not to fear, but to be fishers of people. We have not been called to live in the shallows of life, especially those of us who are called here in this place, but into the deep waters of human experience to be a healing, restoring, strengthening, reviving presence in the world. Do you believe that? Fishers of people. Where is the deep water into which you are being called this morning? Where is it? Is it a child or a grandchild, a friend, a coworker, a stranger? Where are you being called to let down your nets for a catch? So be it. Amen. We have a wonderful joy today uh, to join in the covenant of baptism. So I invite you now to turn with me in your hymnal for the baptismal covenant. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Who do we present for baptism this morning? Robin and Brian? Your, your grandson, Seamus. I'd like to invite you and Seamus and any others you'd like to come uh, forward at this time. I'd like to invite you up here into the altar area. Seamus, if you want to come up. If you could stand right next to me, buddy, that'd be great. Brian and Robin, on behalf of Seamus, um, Dad, Dad, is that right? And Granddad and Mom, Mom, okay. Uh, if you'll answer these questions on Seamus' behalf. On behalf of the ch whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, answer, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so answer, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so answer, I do. Will you nurture Seamus in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, answer, I will. Okay. Amy, as uh, Seamus' godmother, will you do all in your power uh, to support and encourage Seamus in his Christian life? If so, answer, I will. And friends, do you, as Christ's body of the church, reaffirm your, both your reject, your commitment to Christ? We do. 
Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Seamus now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Seamus with the community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Amen. Paragraph 10. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Lord, all the earth, tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and Seamus who now receives it, to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness throughout his life that dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in his final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. All right. Seamus, I'm going to invite you to come around the front of this kneeling pad, and if you will, uh, to kneel and face, face me. I'd like you to go ahead and kneel down, Seamus. All right, I can still see you, so. <laughs> Seamus, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll place our hands on Seamus' head and shoulders. David. Seamus, the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Seamus, I'd like to invite you to take a walk with me. All right? We'll take a, we're going to walk down the aisle here. <laughs> this is your church family now, right? You've been your church family? Okay. Now I'm going to race you to the front, okay? <laughs> Ready? Set? <laughs> now, maybe 20 years ago, I would have. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of Seamus' life. We thank you for his energy. Lord, we thank you for his gentle spirit, his loving spirit. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for his grandparents and his mother, for his aunt and all other family members, his siblings, his brothers. We give you thanks for their family. And we pray that he might continue to grow in wisdom and stature and in your favor, even as we as a community surround him uh, in a community of love and forgiveness, a love of, um, of new life. We ask your blessing. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming up. Friends, I'd like to invite you now to rise and join together for our closing hymn.
Now, friends, may you go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. May the wind be always at your back. May the road rise up to meet you. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. Until we meet again, may the Lord hold you in the hollow of his hand. Amen.